Today we're making three different one-pot meals that are the epitome of comforting, wholesome goodness with the added benefit of minimal cleanup. You can find all the recipes on our website, but if you are looking to enjoy more plants this year, I'm just gonna shout out to our plant-based recipe and nutrition app, which is like a treasure trove of over 1,000 plant-based recipes. We add new recipes every single weekday, and you can use the app to track your nutrition and create balanced meal plans. If you'd like, you can try one week for free. I'm gonna leave that link for you in the description box below. For now, grab your pot and let's get cooking. Okay, for the first recipe, we're gonna start with making a creamy, cozy, and hearty soup. We'll start first with prepping the veggies, starting with an onion. One little thing that I always like to do is have a bowl next to where I'm prepping all my veggies, because that way I can just throw my food scraps into it and it helps to keep the workspace clean. Once we've chopped up the onion, we're then gonna mince some garlic and then peel and de-seed a butternut squash before chopping it up into little cubes. Just keep in mind, the bigger the cubes, the longer it's gonna need to cook, so I like to cut them pretty small. Then we're gonna chop up a bunch of tomatoes, though you could try this recipe with a couple of cans of tinned tomatoes too, I imagine. And then we're gonna grate some ginger. A little tip with this too, I always like to keep a chunk of ginger in the freezer because I find that frozen ginger grates way more easily than fresh ginger. And then lastly, I like to measure out my spices ahead of time. That way it's not gonna burn when I'm trying to add it to the pot when I need it later. We've got curry powder, gram masala, ground coriander and ground cumin, turmeric and some chili flakes. That is a lot of antioxidants right there. Okay, now we can start cooking. We'll start with adding the onion and garlic to the pot, cooking it until it's lightly golden, and then we can chuck in the ginger and spices, toasting this just for a minute or so before deglazing the pan with the tomatoes, a bouillon cube, some water, though you could use vegetable stock here if you'd prefer, and don't forget to add the butternut squash too. Then we're just gonna stir it, cover it, and let it simmer away until the squash is cooked through. Then we're gonna use an immersion blender. You could use a standing blender if that's what you've got just to blitz it up. I like to keep some chunks in here for texture so I don't puree it completely. Finally, we're gonna add in some chickpeas, a can of coconut milk, let this all heat through, and then it's ready to plate up. It's cozy, it's comforting and wholesome, and it serves really well alongside some garlic naan. Oh, this one is so good. All right, next, we're making a childhood classic, mac and cheese. I highly recommend sticking with little tiny macaroni noodles if you can. I'm just afraid that any other pasta shape might mess up the liquid to pasta ratio. So we're gonna add our macaroni to a saucepan, crumble in a veggie bouillon cube, add in some water and some soy milk. And then lastly, we're gonna add a little splash of apple cider vinegar. Then just cook this all uncovered for about 10 minutes. I personally prefer to use soy milk for this recipe because it adds some additional plant-based protein. And one thing you really wanna do in this step is just keep stirring. The pasta tends to kind of stick to each other and to the bottom of the pot if you don't stir, so just keep everything in motion. At this point, just give it a taste test. If the pasta is al dente, then you can add the remaining ingredients. So we'll add half of a cup of plain vegan cream cheese and a quarter of a cup of nutritional yeast flakes for the cheesy taste. Just a heads up, we're using nutritional yeast flakes. If you're using powdered nutritional yeast, it's a lot more concentrated, so add less. You can always add more to taste later. Then we're gonna add in a teaspoon of Dijon mustard, half a teaspoon of onion powder, and lastly, a quarter of a teaspoon of optional ground turmeric. I'm just adding it in to give this whole dish the classic mac and cheese golden color. And we're gonna give it a stir and cook it until the sauce is as thick and glossy as you'd like it. There aren't any veggies in this mac and cheese, so just to balance things out a little bit, I'm gonna serve it with some fresh veggies on the side. I like to add some seasoned breadcrumbs on top just for a bit of crunch, and now this creamy, reimagined childhood classic is ready to dig into. For the last recipe, we're making a super wholesome sun-dried tomato and butter bean stew. We're gonna start with thinly slicing a leek, mincing three cloves of garlic, chopping up some sun-dried tomatoes. I love the umami flavor that these impart on the dish. And then lastly, we're gonna roughly chop a mini mountain of spinach. All right, that's it. Now we can head over to the stove. The cooking begins with sauteing the leeks in some oil, which just helps to soften it and makes it sweeter. And then we can add in the garlic, a bit of dried rosemary and dried thyme. 
Cook this up for another couple of minutes before adding in the sun-dried tomatoes and just a tablespoon of flour, stirring to toast it a bit. The flour here just helps to thicken up the stew a little bit. If you do want to omit it, that's okay. It's just going to end up being a little bit more liquidy, a little bit more soupy. Next, we're going to add in some butter beans, a great source of plant-based protein and fiber. We'll add a veggie bouillon cube and a bit of soy cooking cream for creaminess and some water. Then just cook this all up for a few minutes until the stew thickens up a bit. Lastly, we're gonna add in the spinach, two tablespoons of white wine vinegar, and a little bit of ground black pepper. And then just cook this until the spinach wilts, and that's all there is to it. You can serve the stew in some bowls or eat it straight out of the pot with some crunchy toasted bread. It's a simple weeknight meal that's not only comforting, but also super nourishing. The full breakdown to all the recipes, as usual, you can find the links in the description box below. And I'm also gonna welcome you while you're there to check out our app. I'm really excited about it. And thanks so much for your support with it in this last year. And also happy new year, friends. I'm really excited for what we're gonna be whipping up and cooking up together in the new year. For now, Pickup Limes signing off. We'll see you in the next video. Ow. Tighter. Creamy, wholesome goodness. Um, and wholesomeness in a bowl? No. <laughs> Keeps that liquid and pasta in movement, in motion. In movement. <coughs> it's more concentrated, so add less. You can always add more to taste later. This was like bing, 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 bing. <laughs>